Hello everybody, my name is Zach, aka The Weather Gamer, bringing you another episode of Iowa Bros with Thriller. Hey, what's up, Weather Gamer? Uh, Thriller and I are just going to kind of talk, close out the end of 2019, and uh, we'll pick up in 2020 with new topics or something. We'll, we'll go to the drawing, we'll take a little break here over Christmas and try to figure things out and all that, but... Um, We'll just kind of, we'll talk about our thoughts. I won't go too much into detail about my thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Shield because um, at the end of playing uh, Sword for YouTube, I spent like 15 minutes talking about my thoughts on the game, so I don't want to repeat myself. Um, talk about APA a little bit, you know, just kind of close out the year and kind of what we're looking forward to going into 2020. So. But I guess, what what were your thoughts on this game, Thriller? Because I'm, I'm opinionated okay. on it, but... Okay, so I'm going to give my thoughts before the games come out. So my thoughts before the games come out, everything looked really good. I think they were doing a really good hype from the sub. And the fact that they actually released a trailer after the game was released off of the Star Revolutions was definitely something new and different, but also kind of make a little sense. But I liked it, because they basically... If they if people are only watching like trailers, they literally did not spoil you on evolution starters, which I think for been like forever since we've actually had that, which is I think was really cool. I think the whole fact that this is a game based off of the UK and all parts of like Eastern Europe and stuff like that is so cool and I think it was about time that the UK finally got represented in the Pokemon community. And as for like first time playing the game. First off, the game looks gorgeous. Graphically, the game looks amazing. I definitely think it's really good. The only one thing a lot of people have kind of been having is like the random like pop-up stuff. I, I think you've noticed that too, right, Zach? Yeah, the Ycom. Well, not the Ycom, but like when like all of a sudden you start walking and boom, Wulu start appearing. And then you start walking, boom, Sonya just appears and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the random well, pop-up. And the other thing, like, I, I've got it on screen right now because I'm in the wild area. Um, if you get too close to a tree, you end up seeing the wireframe of that tree. Like, it, the texture you can get oh, in. Never... Yeah. Um, oh, wait, like, I think I've seen something like that, too. I, with, like, I think the trees are about... Yeah, I showed it on uh, during my playthrough because I got too close to one of the trees and... You literally, I'm looking at the dot pattern right now. I can see through the tree and see the grass behind it. So, so I mean, besides that, though, the game like stunningly looks so good. Like, I think it's by far one of the best, really good design games for the Switch, first of all, and for Pokemon itself too. Because now a lot of days Pokemon has gotten really the best design games, but this one definitely, I think, was a really good step forward into why. Uh, Pokemon can start looking like going into the future games yeah. and after playing the game which only took me about a day and a half sorry people but um, first off I mean it is kind of short if you don't do max raids and you just go fall to the wall and just like I'm just gonna peep the game by not grinding and stuff like that because my, my record in this game with just max raids and everything is literally like 17 hours on this game so, because you can easily, if you, like, really dedicated, you can finish the game within 18 hours. But if you're crazy people like me, you can beat the game not only once, but six times, different types of playthroughs, and get it done in 17 hours, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just sitting here, like, I, I could very easily, like, once you get to the wild area the first time, if you just clear all those raids right there, you can, before you go into the next area for the gym challenge to start you could harvest enough candy to probably get a level 30 or 40 mon and just body bag the game and what's actually a cool thing that they did with this is once you if you were able to clear out all the raw arrow like the first time you ever go there they respawn another set of the next round so you can just literally farm for gains until the levels get too high yeah pretty much which is something really cool and plus I think a lot of people really enjoy that because one of the most annoying things to do in a Pokemon game is to grind if you do not have experience here or level. It's one of the most constant things we have to do and it's so annoying. But with these, 
it makes grinding so much easier, less of a time waster, and plus, it's a good thing to do in the background, like you can do, like what Zach does here on his channel, he does like the whole max raid hunting with friends, and boom, he gets to have fun with his friends and grind at the same time. I mean, literally, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing a barbar or a binnacle raid while we're sitting here talking. I'm just gonna clear out the raid area for kicking around while we talk. But yeah, like yeah. As far as graphics go, yeah. I have to agree with you. Like, there are some graphical issues. I don't want to talk about the, how the legendaries move at the end of the game. That's just really, oh, really, yeah. really poor. And they were walking out of that fog and stuff? No, walking out of the fog, they looked... I guess when they walk back in, turn around and walk back into the fog, it is bad. Like, anytime the legendaries I mean, turn to walk, it's bad. And it seems like sometimes they were, like, those, like, floating animation things sometimes, so... Yeah, but... But, uh, other than that, I think, I think, first off, the fact that, um... The fact that you get to battle with the main legendaries against the third legendary that if some people didn't spoil themselves on, they didn't know about, that is really cool. And plus, the music in that background. Yeah, oh, this, that this game has epic. such good music. I think it's by far one of like the top three, if not maybe, the best soundtrack we've gotten from a Pokemon game. Because tell me any gym leader theme that beats the gym leader theme in this game. Tell me a theme that beats it. I couldn't, because None. there are only three Pokemon games that I ever have listened to the game audio in full on. This game, Colosseum, and XD. Those are the only three that I will listen to the actual game audio for. The rest of them, when I do playthroughs, either I'm listening to music or, uh, like, I've got my stream mix loaded or whatever, because I just don't care for the music. But this game... Like, Slumbering Wield, um, the Wild Area music, the Gym Leader theme, the Dynamax theme, or the Gigantamax theme, like, all of it, it's just so clean. It's, like, I, I'm yeah, more than willing to play this of... game's audio numerous times. Now, this is one of the, like, the, this is where people, this is like when people was all complaining about the game not going to be good. They proved it was good by not only giving us, first off, wolves, which we never have proper wolves for. I will say I like don't like, like their unarmored forms. I just, the fact that they're missing I ears, mean, I don't like it. Wait, did someone vent miss it here? I didn't think yeah, I'd see that. Yeah, they're missing opposite ears. Like, the tip of their ear is cut off on each of them. It's opposite. I mean, yeah, with like, Za with like Zashi, I'm totally get like that, because he has a crown on, you would think he has both his ears, and he's missing at least half of his ear and stuff. I mean, I guess it's part of the story to, like, they were part of the great, like, stopping back in the day, and they, that's probably, like, their battle scars and stuff. I'm pretty but sure say they're dead. Just, like, I'm I mean, pretty they sure were the dead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they died until just we brought them back to life. Yeah. I will say, though, I agree with, like, Zacian's in armored form. I don't like it as much. I mean, Z I, I can I actually still kind of get behind Zamazenta's, because it does look like, pretty cool. Oh, I loved Zamazenta's until I saw that it was missing an earpiece, and I was like, oh, come on. Well, even that, but, like, you can just slide past, because it does... Because you got, like, the fact that he actually moves like he has the body of a shield. Like, that, how he looks like truds to his sides and everything when he was doing that. Yeah. And then just Austin just walks up tight and just kind of does, eh. yeah. But yeah, my opinion on the games is like 100%, like an eight or nine out of ten, easy. I will say max rates make the game look really easy. But if you're looking for a challenge, you don't do it. And then also you can do the challenge of doing type locks. Like I did a water type lock and I won. I'm currently doing a dark type type lock and I'm really kicking butt, even though I've lost a lot of lives. But I've done surprise lock, and the first time I did the surprise lock, oh my god, that guy just got absolute trash. Like, I barely got any type of thing. I only kept getting, like, mods that were, like, Gen 6 and below. I only got, like, one or two, like, Gen 8 mods. Yeah. But the second time I was doing it, I got freaking the luck of glory. I got Dreepy, I was getting Galarian forms, I was getting Galarian Pokemon, some I haven't used, some I have used. Like, there was some good stuff, but 
So I I decided to say, you know what, surprise trade, you're about to meet Joe. And it's a cool feature it is, but it's just so just it can just be a pain in the well, just pain in the butt because you just never know what how people trade stuff. People can be controlling you or people can be trading you the absolute power. Yeah, it's not necessarily just that. Like the whole as a lot of people have said, I never thought I'd say this, but I actually miss the festival flaws because YCOM is so hard to connect. I will admit, like, with the fact that you click Y, then you click the plus on your Switch, and you connect it, it does seem a little weird that you have to see what everyone else is doing. I mean, it makes sense if you could just see, like, the list of what your friends are doing. That's fine. But if it's literally everyone across the world, it does get a little annoying. I mean, it's the best way to be searching for max range, don't get me wrong, but still it can be a little, you know, a little annoying at times. Yeah, it's it's not just that. It's the fact that you have such a hard time connecting at times and that you're kind of stuck using a four-digit code every single time. Like, there's only so many four-digit codes. Eventually, someone's gonna figure out your four-digit code. Yeah, I mean, it should be like, kind of like the codes, like how Let's Go had it, just like have symbols and stuff like that, which would make it so much easier. Yeah. Because it's more harder to think exactly what symbols you need to be typing out specifically. Like numbers, people can literally guess any numbers. Yeah, it it's only gonna take so long before bots somehow get through this and they just start putting in random codes all the time. Yeah, but yeah. Overall, I definitely think um, I will say though with Champion Leon, I love how diverse his team gets depending on the start you get. Yeah. Like this team, his main mods he keeps on his team is Aegislash, Haxorus, Dragonpult, Charizard. And then his last two are literally a typing that's either weak to your starter and the starter itself like the fact that he has so many like team changes depending on the starter alone really makes his team really interesting and the fact that his team is really strong too like this is one of the best champions we have seen yeah all in all like it's solid um, like solid gym leaders across i think the only gym leader that wasn't solid was the dark gym I mean, well, it was because we had no real story of him until he actually got the spike mark, so... Yeah. It's understandable, but still, Piers' theme, though, is really clean. I love Piers' theme. Yeah. Like, the fact that he got his own personal theme as a gym leader, though, that is dope. Yeah, and the other thing, um... I know a lot of people really complained about the rivals in the games the last, like... To Gen 6 having all your friends instead of a true rival, Gen 7 having Pal, which Just, we don't want to nice. talk about that. Like, this gen actually I had would, good rivals. I, I love Mark. Yeah, I would say they actually had personalities to them. Like, BD was focused on being Mr. I'm the coolest, I can do anything because I was picked by the chairman. Marnie's the one that just wants to be like the trainer itself, want to be become the champion. Hop is the one that wants to be like his older brother, and then, because I definitely think everyone just had so much personality to their character. Like Hop was just super genetic, but then when he lost to B, he became super down on himself. And then he was near the end of the game, just pumping himself back up, being his energetic self. So like, the game truly gave life and personality to like every single character. In yeah. this game, which was something that's never been done, and it's like, like even when you look at the gym leaders when they lost, they had a personality and they're like actually feeling defeat. Yeah, well, and like for me, um, I stayed away from story spoilers, um, and just sitting watching Duncan play, and I probably would have felt the same had I played. Seeing the whole thing with Chairman. Uh, Rose actually being the head villain, that was such a gut-wrenching twist to me. Like, that that was a sucker punch to the gut. I really thought Oleana was going to be the villain, and that Chairman Rose was just going to be, like, 
a good guy who didn't know what was going on underneath of him. And to have it twist, because all throughout the story they played it up as him being a decent guy. And then they twist it right at the end like that. To be honest, I actually saw some people, and they, some people already thought that Chairman Rose was the bad guy. And uh, to be fair, they never introduced they never introduced the bad guy in any of the trailers and probably any of the leaks and stuff. They never really introduced who it really was the main villain. Like we only saw was Team Yell, but Team Yell wasn't per se really a bad guy team. They were just a team that was just devoted to want to help Marnie win the gym challenge and become the champion. Yeah, they weren't a bad team at all. Like because like even in the in the game when you do that last double battle for Piers and the one guy is in like his actual clothes, he literally states that everyone from Team Yell is literally gym is like the gym trainers trying to help Marnie win the gym challenge. Yeah, that that I kind of the fact that um, that was Team Yell's like twist is that they were actually gym trainers that did throw me for a bit of a loop. Yeah. Especially when, like, you saw the guy when he didn't have his no makeup, and then it's like, wait a minute, what? These guys were actually trainers? Yeah. And then it's like, you never expect, like, a team to ever be formed like that. When you look at teams like Galactic, uh, uh, Plasma, they're literally teams that were kind of just, like, influenced by a major influencer and stuff. But with these, they just, like, no one influenced them. Like, Piers was like, oh, we'll be fine, don't worry. But they literally took it on themselves to want to pursue this dream of having Marnie win so bad that they would take up the whole idea of becoming a, a team of sorts to stop people. Yeah. Which I think was really cool. I think Eternius, though, is one of the most scariest but awesome-looking designs of a Pokemon, even though it's really a monster. I have to admit, very, very glad that it's... Uh big boy form is not available in the game. I mean, I don't think it's ever available unless you it, were... It never hacked. It, yeah, it's never going to be just because of the fact that it's... It's base stat total is way too high. Yeah. It's just a powerhouse. In fact, it literally has a move called Dynamax Cannon doesn't need to have a Dynamax form. It has its Dynamax form in a move. There you go, people. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Like, you can't um, Dynamax with the Legendaries, which I think is a little weird, but... I mean, yeah. But it makes sense. I mean, they're already overpowered Legendaries with broken abilities. Yeah, like, no kidding. Plus one attack. Like, like, like Zacian's just like, straight busted. Zacian is basically going to be the king of... E like, literally, you're going to be the king of EGC. Like, yeah. if you put a Anguru and, like, Zacian together, oh my god, that is just going to be a broken combo. Well, and even in the game, like, when you go to catch Zacian, it's probably the hardest legendary you'll ever have to catch because it gets the plus one swords dance, and then it... Im or plus one's attack boost, and then it immediately swords dances turn one. So it's already yeah, that... plus three, and you're like, what? I ended up having to take a level 92 Corviknight in, and I still almost lost. Yeah, that thing is just... I mean, don't get us wrong, people. Zamazenta's ability of like having a plus one defense is, it's not that bad. But when you're looking at a mod like Zashian, Base and you attack. His base 140 attack, and it gets an instant plus one. This thing, luckily, doesn't need to run a scarf or a band, otherwise, unless you unless you choose like the nut rust the, the rust with the with the sword form actually. But still, like it, it'll still get that interpret sword. Imagine choice scarves. Imagine choice bands. Imagine this thing on a web team. This thing will just destroy it. Yeah, it's Every... definitely Ubers. Thank God it's an Ubers. Imagine if people actually say, like, oh, yeah, we'll just make this an OU Pokemon. You just can't have a sword field. Okay, uh, instant plus one choice fan. Okay, we all lose. Yeah, it's why, basically, if you get one in Ranbats, you're basically done. Your opponent's... Yeah, I had a face one before, and I almost beat it, but, um... Then, yeah, I got destroyed. Yeah, so... 
But yeah, Sword and Shield will, was so, definitely a good yeah, game. It is still to me a little weird that Zacian is pure fairy in his own armor form, while Zacian still, Zamazenta is still pure fighter. I mean, Zacian doesn't, like, that's one thing with Game Freak is sometimes with their designs. I feel like designs are supposed to fit the typing. I mean, I can see kind of like with Zamazenta's fighting, because, like, he's got, like, like big, burked up, like, muscles of fur for his, like, that red to represent the shield. But with Zacian, the only thing that really screams about fairy is just those somewhat dreadlocks he has, so I don't quite know how that makes him a fairy type. Yeah, and actually, I think um, somebody pointed it out to me. I don't remember who, but uh, Zacian in one of the decks is, is listed as Zamazenta's older sister or something like that. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So that might be why it's fairy type. I don't know. Probably, yeah, but still. I mean, first off, this thing with its armored form is like a scarier version of Mega Mama. Like, this makes Mama Wawa Wawa look like a joke. Like, Steel Fairy. Very little checks that. Yeah. Fire type's about the only thing that checks it. Ground type. It's types. realistic only typing. Well, ground type still can lose to it, so. Because it gets that plus one or plus two if it gets to lose. Everything like, still have to loses to it. Yeah, the only legit thing that can potentially have a chance at it is only extremely bulky water types if they get burned, or ground types like Excadrill that are scarfed if can beat them. Yeah, I was gonna say it's gotta be scarfed because uh, Sacred Sword in close combat will just rip through. Yeah, it's just that it's just a that's a threat, but. That's why uh, we're hashtag Team Sword, because it is a powerhouse, and it's probably the better of the two, obviously. I just chose Sword, because I liked the blue coloring over the red. I'm weird. I pick my games based on colors, and then box legendary is the secondary thing. Yeah, but like the fact also Behemoth Blade is much more of a... It literally looks like when he does that one slash and does the multiple slashes, like literally something you see in an anime those slashes, which is really cool. Yeah. Okay, real talk, Soul Rock is the worst Dynamax raid partner you can get. I totally agree with you. He does nothing but glitch rock polish or cosmic power. That is all he does. Hey, he just used a rock throw this time. It's like he barely attacks anything. Yeah. And I kind of need three hits because I'm using a very weak Sobble against an Axew. So, I got not much else I can really do here. Yeah, just, uh, why people, why, why give us NPCs that literally have, like, some of them have, like, the god tier mom, like a Snorlax, or a Salazzle, and yet you give us a freaking Soul Rock that has two useless moves. Well, it's not only that, they give us ones that are terrible in matchups, like, how many times have I done oh, yeah, G-Max was... Sandaconda and my three partners are... Well, to be fair, I think I you have Pikachu. at least one of those. I get Pikachu, one of those Salazzle, of, like, and um... something that's weak to a coverage move, so I'm usually on my own. Yeah, yeah, but to be honest, they, they, they probably give you at least one that's the weakest of the group, so that way it's like a, a main target for them to go after, so it's not just you that they go after. I think the worst so that, set I've had was Togepi, Clefairy, Wobbuffet. I think I've had that one still made it out just barely okay. I had that versus a G-Max Sandaconda. Oh yeah, you failed that big time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I actually um, did a couple of G-Maxes too, and I've... The one Pokemon I just still can't catch, even if it's G-Max or not, I can't catch Center Scorch to save my life. <laughs> and I literally had one earlier today or last night. I was like, <gasps> G-Max Center Scorch. And it was also funny, as in Surprise Trade, I actually got that too on a Surprise Trade. I got a G-Max Center Scorch too. Nice. I haven't done any Surprise well, Trades, so... They're not that bad. 
I do like the fact, though, when it comes to this, you don't have to constantly wait. You can literally just keep going on the adventure and then click Y to get the trade. And it just, like, bam, hops right into the trade and you don't have to do anything else. Yep. Which is a much better improvement for trading. Like, it really is. Yeah, definitely. So, <sighs> well, yeah. So that's Overall, kinda... like I said... Like, yeah, overall, I give these games, like, an 8 or 9 out of 10. There's still, like, one or two things that could be fixed up with them, but other than that, they're pretty solid games, and I definitely think they're going to be, like, top five best Pokemon games out there. Yeah, I didn't give them as high of a rating as you did, um, but it was still a very high rating. Whoops, hang on. Okay, sorry about the phone call my dad called. I gotta go run and get something real quick, so I'm going to turn this over to Thriller for, like, two minutes, and he's going to just talk. I'll be right back. Yeah, but I'm taking over the channel now, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just raid anyone that we're back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, definitely go ahead and check out uh, Zach, subscribe to him. He's got so much potential to keep wanting to do this, and he really wants to make this like a semi-profession for him. So let's try to help him and support him here. He wants to get to 75 subs before the end of the year, and I think we can do it. If you believe we can, at, put hashtag weatherman in the comments because Zach can do it. I mean, he's online, he's called the Winter Weather Game. He can do it. He's been doing weather discussions. After how many people have probably wanted to actually think of him doing weather discussions and stuff like that. Let's get him there. Also, hashtag, um, Zach likes pudding, because maybe he likes pudding. Just let him feel better knowing he likes pudding. And everything, so yeah. But also, everyone, how your day's going? Are you... Okay, I'm back. Yep. So, there's parents who are like, hey, can you go do this for us? Oh. Yeah. Unless you have a good dad like mine who's really good at convincing people because I have the vehicle I actually just got. He, um, the guy was, talk was tw talking about 2500 for it, but my the thing with me and my family, we always get cash, so he lowered the price by 300 so I got 2200 instead. Yeah, I need to get a car. Mine's... My dad, my dad is, like, car smarts, like, car salesman, car expert. He is all on it. He just knows his stuff so good. Yeah, my car's falling apart, so <laughs> I need to get a new oh, one. Don't worry, I know how you feel, dude, with that tracker. I know how you feel. I've got ice forming on the inside of it during the night, like my windshield or something's not sealing correctly. I got a uh, transmission, or I got an oil leak in it that's leaking into the engine, so I can't drive more than like 25 miles without my engine overheating, at least in the summer. With it being so cold right now, I can pretty much get wherever I want. Just a whole host of issues, but... I'm not in the position to really fix that right now, so. Yeah. That that's a yeah. 2020 issue. <laughs> yeah. So, 2020, but... I'm just for me for 2020, I'm just looking to start working out a little bit, try to, because like I'm really built up top with my chest and my arms because like for all the years I've done work and I've done like trash cans, lifting stuff and everything like that, like my arms were like built from all that and plus Jim was a lot of like light lifting and stuff like that so I would just focus more on like doing ad workouts try to like thin out my stomach a little bit but other than that I have to much besides just staying positive staying up good and everything yeah I, I've got kind of a similar thing but I'm reversed I played tons of years of soccer so like lower body wise I'm ready to go upper body is Pillsbury Doughboy Ah, don't worry, Zach. And that when you when it's time for Christmas, you drive down, we'll get you into shape, and we'll also do Twitch streaming. That'll make you feel good. Yeah, well, you know, my knee's not cleared yet, so you're gonna have to <laughs> give me a little I'm probably not gonna be damn it, doctors. Hey, 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 you know, it's a four to six month recovery. December first was four months. I'm not quite that fast. So you know yeah, I blame them. There's I don't. Like, it's just, it's what it is. Yeah, but don't worry, people. We will make sure this happens one way. I'll, I'll come down at some point. Like, 
I might, so originally I thought I was going to be here alone starting the 19th until like the 5th or 6th of January. Well, now it sounds like I'm going to be going down until Christmas, leaving the 19th going down until Christmas, but then I'll be here again by myself. So before the year ends, we could still do something or we could kick off uh, 2020 with a live um, recording of Iowa Bros. Yeah, and we could also do like a special, like, not like, kind of like a sleep block versus, too. We could do that on, like, on Twitch and stuff. Yeah. And, it's like, prove who is the superior either Iowa bro. I mean, we're also going to do that in APA this season. We're, we're tied up yeah, again. So also gonna... I might take the yeah. crown back. Or get. I mean, but this one, this one's gonna be like a little either or because even like the weeks come up, we'll still be a little rusty trying to use all our new mons and stuff. Because you and me were both kind of like the same. We're literally using teams where we've never used these Pokemon. Yeah, but at the same time, there's also an adjust because I had that reality check in just building the team. It's like. Oh crap, this mon gets this move, and this mon gets this move now, and this mon gets the. When did that happen? So, it's definitely yeah. not your Gen 7 meta anymore. There's gonna be an adjustment period. But, by the by end way, of people season, watching this, by the way, people watching this that run leagues, if you let Como O be a tier 2 at any point in the draft, when it literally has a Z crystal as a move, you're banned from making drafts. That thing is either OU or banned. Thank you and good night. Yeah, no, it's, um, that's one of those things for WWC we have to discuss is if we're allowing that move or not. And if we do, then that probably moves Como O up into Tier 1 territory. There's no way it should be allowed uh, technically as you Tier could, 2. Technically, you could leave it in Tier 2, but you have to tell the people they're banned from using the move. Yeah, it'd just be like banning Clangorous Soul Blaze, which I believe is now called Clangorous Soul, Soul or Bl something like that. That. Yeah, but for some people don't know, Zach did his draft recap, and for some who actually don't know from Zach's channel that I were subscribed to my channel. First of all, sorry for everyone Zach's uh, subscriber that subscribed to me, but I recently just took a, took a break from YouTube, so there's that. So, but if anyone's actually curious about my team, I'll let you guys know. I have Cinderance, which basically has a protein ability, which is allowed. That I have Peladon. I have Inteleon. I have Decidueye. I have Galarian Rapidash. Frostmall. The good boy Boltlin, Rhydon, Girder, and a Rotom fan. If, I swear, if, okay, if our game doesn't matter at the end of the season, because we play week 12, if I remember correctly, like, you no, and I. No, week 8. Week 8. Week eight. Do I play week, oh, yeah. Jake, I play week 12. Never yeah. mind, I was going to say you and I can't meme as the last week, because if we were, and our game, like, we were both locked for playoffs, our seating was locked and all that, then we could meme, and you would have to bring, if you didn't bring Air Balloon, Rotom fan, I would be very disappointed in you. I would have brought uh, I would have brought special ride on. My surfing ride on. I mean, that's one way to. Never mind. I'm not gonna go. Yeah, I, for, I'm for not a gonna lot go of people, there. I don't. Yeah, for a lot of people that don't know, I'm not much of a know of the mean set. So you know, that's all Zach. And I mean, I'm not that. either. I. I just steal memes from other people, like running six choice locked mons, or the only true meme that I actually created, which is now banned because of it, is the curse baton pass under Trick Room. Because now APA, you uh, can't baton pass, this, you can't stat pass um, this season in APA with baton pass, yeah. whereas before you could pass anything but speed, but because I attempted to meme with Mega Mens and Baton Pass it. They're like, no, you can't curse pass anymore. And to be honest, like, you were one of the only few people in that league that really, like, abused the whole Baton Pass stats rule. Well, yeah, that's A because lot. that's usually well, yeah, my, it, my thing, is, like, send in, send in and something plus a lot of people don't bodied and then Baton Pass. And plus, a lot of players probably don't prep for you to do that because they probably think you'll be like the general player and like prep the like, the way you, they'll expect you to prep. Yeah, I bring more than likely not teach new players instead of old players. 
That's the thing, is, like, I, and Cammy and I talked about it in, uh, Underdogs. Um, it's weird being one of the old ones in Indigo now. Yeah. Because Cammy, Cammy, SV, myself, and Jimmy, and Suspect, we're the six guys that have been there since season one of Indigo. Like, I, I've played every yeah. game in all four seasons except for week one of season one because I took over week two. Well, yeah, that was fair. So, yeah. so obviously. By the way, Zach, why do you have Earth po Quake instead of Earth Power on your Necrozma? We were physical. That was our second Zach, mistake. Zach. Also, don't spoil because. Oh wait, no, that video actually did come out. I thought this was going up tomorrow. Yeah, so the APA. We can talk about my screw ups in APA. I forgot about that. His only, his only real screw up people is that he just got a crit and that was it. Uh, and didn't bring mirror armor. All that too. That was his biggest blunder right there. He would have won the game if he had mirror armor. Yeah. The problem is, is Huff didn't. I didn't remember it, and Huff didn't know that. Um, Jellicent got strength sap this generation. And that goes back to the oh, crap. This mon gets this move now. And this is why people we check move sets before we go to battle and no, check what I, the Pokemon I are. just totally spaced on Jellicent having strength set. I won't forget that one again. Trust me, I will not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm love the. Uh, I've actually was a little impressed by how I used Rhydon. Rhydon was a uh, pretty interesting mod. The fact that Rhydon got basically crippled away from a kill though and could have won the game is a saddening thing though. Yeah. Where are we in our quote unquote rivalry? We're tied up 3 3, aren't we? Or is it 2 2? Yeah. Uh, the last time we faced off, I believe it was APM and I kind of destroyed you. Yeah, but I can't remember what the record is. Um... It's three, it should be 3 3 because in Indigo season 2, two yeah. I beat you. Yeah. And then I believe. I, I beat you the in next... PCF. I know you beat me in PCF, but I don't know if that was the second or third match. I beat you in WWC Season 3. That was. Okay, so actually, PCF, I think, was the second match then. Then there was. Actually, I think we might be just 2 2. I think we're just 2 2 because I think I was leading 2 1. Because then APM after, after WC was that one. So yeah, we're 2 and 2, technically. Yeah, so. You held the crown. Yeah, Zach had a, I took it. Zach, to split Zach had a I small lead it. just in one game. Well, and APM, like. The. So. I beat you with. I'm technically with teams I've drafted, I'm 2 and 1 against you. You beat me with a team that I drafted, and then you beat me with my replacement team, so. Yeah. I don't know. It. Anyways, Honestly, regardless. In BCF, you got, I just got really hacked out in the game. Because uh, I missed Sleep Powder, I missed Toxic, I got critted. You also so. tried to set up in front of me when you shouldn't have set up. I mean, you still would have won regardless. It would just would have came down to differential points. I'm really tempted to run into the wrong area of the wild area here and just see what happens. Yeah, I'm just, again, I'm trying, like, I'm so, oh, I wish Gerda could have done good on my first week, because it literally destroyed, it, like, destroyed my opponent's team for week one. But, I missed Rock Slide! Who's surprised? No one! You and accuracy moves, man. You just can't hit. I'm telling you. I land more pyro balls than I land a 95 accurate move. I almost feel like I'm Kyle A. I mean, that's not bad. You've never lost, then. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, Zach has never beaten me, everyone. You heard it here first. He never uh, beat me. No, I've got video evidence that says otherwise. Zach, that was supposed to be part of the plan. You were supposed to be quiet about that. Yeah, I know. I'm just. Rattling your cage a little bit. He just does it again, people. He just keeps ruining the butt of the jokes. He just keeps doing it. 
Well, here's here's something for you. <laughs> because of how messed... So APA's speed tiers are really messed up. And Cammy and I talked about that too. Like, Galar decks only has such terrible speed stats, it's not even funny. I almost drafted... I mean, Gilgion. there's some... Is that a oh, sheer after you insulted my after you insulted my son oh in the my last God. time. Again, that... hang on. Yep. So back. It's just my dad being my dad again. Like he called me. He asked me to run down to his bathroom the first time and tell him what mouthwash he uses. Well, actually, he told me to tell my mom what mouthwash he uses. So I did that. He just called me. What mouthwash do I use? I was like, I told mom like you asked me to. He said. I told you to tell me, and I said, no, you did, but it's whatever. My phone's on vibrate, so yeah. he is not interfering with the podcast the rest of the way. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited with my team. I think I have a really good, strong team. It's just going to really come down to how I build a team and how I play my team. Yeah. Well, I've not... I, I definitely every raid in this area and it just reset and i'm not doing it again i'm gonna keep moving <laughs> that, that's that's the that's the one thing too you can just do like one time because more than likely at the start of the game you can easily clear it once but if you're going to be that dedicated to clear again and just slowly use your little feet to run and run and run yeah, i mean there is a purple beam over there i'm kind of half tempted to go run and see what the purple beam is well, that's the only reason I would do it. It's just to do the purple beam, because that's the best stuff. Yeah, I'll go check out the purple beam, and then I'm going to keep moving. <laughs> um, anyways. That's, that's yeah, the so... one main route I, I do with that. But yeah, I actually will take back what I said about doing like all the Dynamax and the raid things. Those are actually pretty fun and entertaining. They're a good way to kill time. Yeah. I love how it's not. I love how it's not mandatory. That is one thing I love about that. That it's not a mandatory thing we have to worry about. It's only like in like important battles or if you're doing the raid battles. That's what I like about it. Like it's literally just only in the big boss or gym leader battles that it ever happens. It doesn't happen anywhere else. It's just I literally wish... in the important stuff. Yeah, I wish you could Dynamax elsewhere, but you know, I understand why we can't. Yeah, but that's one thing that, that made me change how, what I liked about it. That it's not totally mandatory. It's not, because, think about it, are you going to want to literally do that every single battle when you get the Dynamax no, features? but I mean, like that's. We sh I wish we could do it, like, versus our rivals. I mean... Technically, you do that with BD in Arrival, because he faces you again, technically, so... Yeah, and I mean, like... And you do do it time... against Hop and Marie when it comes to those type of matches, too. What's in the box? It's a low tad. Okay. Low tad. Low tad! What's in the box? It's a low tad. But yeah, okay, so that's kind of APA... It'll be fun to see, yeah. like, who's going to yeah, take the crown. I'm actually... I'm, I'm excited to try to use Frost Moss since its ability... Its hidden ability is busted, broken. I don't know what its hidden ability is. It's called Ice Scales, where it's taking... It literally takes half damage from any special attack. Okay, so I'll just Fire Punch you to death. I don't or worry, I'll be Alka Fairy. Or Stone Edge you, or Rock Slide, because I hit those. Oh, just rub that salt in the wounds now, Don, don't you? Hey, hey, how many stone edges did I hit in APA this season? I'm three for three. I've yeah, yet to, yeah, I've, yeah. I've yet to miss a stone edge. And you know what? I say that, and next week I'm going to miss all my stone edges or whatever if I bring them. Yeah, yeah, then you deserve that then. Hey, I paid already twice in NCL for having such good accuracy. I lost two games because Gujar was blind for two games. Hey, uh, he, he still carried me, so he shouldn't but, be mad at him. Yeah, so Gujar carried definitely me. carried me. And then you just dropped him for Haxorus, so... Hey, I wanted to use a new dragon type that I hadn't used before. That's, that's fair. Haxorus is also still, like, really strong and powerful. I am, like, legitimately a dragon tamer i think you look at I mean, how well dragons like, do for me outside of a certain couple i do pretty well with them 
Yeah, like, and plus it was on my championship team for ABM, so I can already speak good stuff about it, so. Yeah, we just, we just don't talk about the failure that is Flygon, or I can't think of the other hey, noise. Hey, 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 Flygon gave me a 6-0 win in a league match, so you hush your mouth. Flygon and Noivern, and I'm trying to think who the other lower dragons are that I've struggled with. Latios. Latios is a hit or miss because you never really figure out what kind of set works best. It's physical set, special set, support set. Yeah, like those are the three dragons that I know I haven't tamed yet. And Noivern I can kind of see well too because Noivern doesn't really get the best move pull per se. And now without him, Powers is also not going to be really that good anymore nowadays, too. Yeah, by the way, in case you were wondering, WWC is not bringing back Hidden Power. We are going to allow Return. We're going to allow Pursuit Trapping, but we're not going to let Hidden Powers be back. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It's still technically one of the things I did get taken out in. Yeah, but... Are you also uh, doing, like, all the whole Mega thing, too, still, or are you not going to... Yeah, we're going to have Megas. We don't know if we're doing Dynamax, though. I don't think you should. It's busted, dude. The problem is, is I want to use the G Maxes, and I. <laughs> that's that's the real reason I want Dynamaxing is because I want to have access to the G. Well, if you think about it, like think about like how you see how online plays, there's some people that are so good competitively. Like my buddy John Jr. used a belched Dynamax High Dragon with, and got instant plus two just from using belch because he didn't have to have a berry. And he was able to just wreck house with High Dragon because he was able to get it to plus three. Yeah, that's High Dragon doesn't have a G Max though, so we don't have to allow that. The problem is, is G Maxing only lasting three turns. Like, do we put them in the Megas? Do we not put them in the Megas? Do we allow Dynamaxing completely? Well, then, here's the thing though: if you technically put him in the Megas, you still have to draft that Pokemon. So, like, you draft. G-Max uh, Dreadnought, you automatically dra draft General, which was something you probably didn't want to do, but now you automatically have that as well. And that takes it off the board, technically. Yeah. So it's like, if you get the G-Max, you're basically getting two Pokemon for the price of four. Yeah. Which is really fair on people's You're not wrong there. It's it's something Jake and I will have to figure out. And depending on but how yeah, many I'm, applicants I'm, we get, maybe a third commissioner. <laughs> Yeah, uh, maybe someone in this call. Uh. Yeah, I, I definitely will consider it because if I have to open up... If I get so many applications and I have too many high-skilled players that are just going to rip things apart, then I'll create the upper... I'll create the Elite League, the Middle League, and the um, Starter League divisions, and then I'll have to have a third commissioner, so... Yeah, but, um, yeah, we're looking... And for people wondering, um, so far, me and Zach, I mean, sadly, Zach's not going to be able to use as much of the Gen 8 hype for his team, but with my team, I'm looking really excited to try out these Gen 8 mons, see if any of them want to reuse. Hey, I got or, a decent amount of Gen 8 mons. Three. You have three. I have Corviknight, I have Cramorant, I have Morpeko, and I have... I thought I had four. Oh, uh, well, be honest, are you going to really want to use the other one, really? Yeah, uh, I am! I'm going to get that thing on Kill Leaderboard, because everybody says it's total crap, and it's not. Dart I wouldn't be... say it's bad. I mean, Eviolite is really good, and the only thing you're missing, though, is just Dragon Darts. That's the only thing you're really missing. Yeah, well, you know, it still functions decently the same way, and after a D-Dance with Eviolite, it's better than Dragapult. Imagine if it got Roost, then it would be better than Dragapult. So, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to fail this low tad because I'm going to take it to 10 turns because I have terrible support. Holy shit. I have... I never, I, for me, I don't know why, it always seems like it's more than 10 turns at one point for me. Do you ever feel like that too? Yeah, there's, like more. there's times where I'm like, wait, it's how long? Oh my god, it just healed so I much. I literally, like one me. time... I literally counted out the turns, and I think it was actually a turn 11 when I was actually able to knock out the, the Raymon to catch it. I was like, wait a minute, we actually have one more turn? And I think it was like a, a Gigantamix Corviknight, and I think it was like, oh, it turns out, like, apparently the turn was still going. I was like, oh, we have a chance to catch it! Yes, we caught it! Yeah, I don't want to talk about G-Max Corviknight, because that thing I've yet to catch. 
a G Max Corviknight. I will say that that you can get shinies in these raid battles is actually. Really I cool. know. I, like I want shiny Corviknight. That thing is legitimate. I love how I love really how the designs. Have you seen all the shinies yet? Yeah, well, of course I look. I love how like some of them were. I really love how they were designed perfectly. Like Rookie D's is so perfect. I hate Rookie D's. Like it starts. Well, Rookie D's is not like perfect, perfect. Like the evolution line is perfect. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like Rookie D's is definitely kind of like me. Corva Squires looks pretty cool, but then you literally look at Corva Knight. And you look at like it's in a way like it rusted over time. It's the like how knight. it was stuff like that too. Like you look at it because you look at how it is normally, then you look at it shiny and you think like, whoa, this Corvette aged into like the future, and then it's still like this metallic bird but with a new type of metal coating. Like that's so sick. Yeah, I will definitely. Oh fuck, this low tad has rain dish. Come on, can we just kill this thing, please? Sorry, just totally. Could be, it could be worse. It could have been Swift Swim. You could have been I would five. prefer that it was Swift Swim with what I've got for help here, because all Eevee's doing is helping handing me. All I can do oh is. Oh my god, I hate that freaking Eevee. All oh, I'm wow, able Eevee. to do is Water Pulse, because that's the strongest thing Sobble's got. I got, you don't have to worry about it. water absorbed, so. I got Wobbuffet doing nothing, and Togepi's alternating between Draining Kiss and Life Dew. I feel, I think Life Dew's kind of a stupid and move idea. Of course. Cool for water sports and stuff, but, yeah. Of course, the turn that, um. Yeah, there's ten turns. I failed it. Alright, whatever. It's not worth it. Um, of course, the turn that Wobbuffet gets hit, it uses Safeguard instead of Counter. Yeah, I know. I, I've seen that stupidity happen. Like, come on, Wobbuffet. There's a big beware. I do love how, like, Mons will start chasing after you. Yeah, like, there's a video on YouTube where, like, the Wild Aim is dangerous, and the person's literally standing in front of stuff like, like, like Bisharp, Lucario, Exodus, and they're and chase to death by them. Well... Uh, Excadrill, uh, Naruto runs after you. Yeah. The one that really I hate is Braviari, because that thing does not leave you alone. It just keeps coming after. I stood in front and didn't move, just stood in front of a Max Raid portal, um, and I got attacked four times by Braviari that just spawned, they turned, they saw me, and they immediately attacked. I didn't even move. I haven't had that happen yet, but... Yeah, it's not fun. I would say Grapplox is kind of creepy, because, I mean, in the water, he kind of makes yeah. his on, like, be weird. His little, like, spider crab walk. Yeah. Is I think definitely... Grapplox is also a pretty decent Pokemon. Not the oh, best. Doesn't have a lot of disappointment water fighting, but uh, it's still not that bad. It's a... It's signature moves not that bad, too, like... Think about, imagine if that thing got Arena Trap, and then you click Octolock. Octolock Think how broken is that. basically Arena Trap, except U-Turn gets you out of it. Yeah, but that's a really good, like, I mean, it, it won't make him the best Pokemon, but it'll make him probably at least a decent, especially like when low tier, like, leagues that, like, tier 3 below, he's going to be one of the best low tiers to use in that one. Oh, definitely. Thing. The other issue, um, they, the name for its pre-evolution is rather unfortunate. Yeah. I don't really think calling him on Clobopus was a good idea. Sounds like Perry the Platypus if you're saying that. Mm, ah. No, I was... Patty Trills has already made enough jokes involving it, I'm not going to continue to make jokes with it. <laughs> But yeah, I think the shiny for it also looks pretty cool. It really looks like it's really like a red um, map. Yeah, that's not on my list of shinies that I like from this gen. Shiny yeah, Dreadnought. Grim Snarl. Grim Snarl. That um, one. Oh, okay. Are you using the gifts of the shinies I like here, Zach? No, like, shiny Grim Snarl, I want to catch a shiny Grim Snarl. Um, it's just not. Um, 
like number one on my list. Well, obviously, I'm just saying, I'm just random, just saying random shines. I don't think I have a personal favorite, even though I saw all the listed ones. Um, have you seen Shiny Dreadnought? I think I have. I don't think it looks that good to me. So, uh, it's like a deep green. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got like a deep green scale and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I love it. It's, I, it's, okay. it's one of my favorites. I like those. I like those really like dark blue, dark green. No nurse joy. I was not talking to you. Um, the the really dark, rich colored ones are the ones that I like. Yeah, for me, I just go for what the the scheme is. Like, if the scheme works, I love it. If I, because I'm not really particular of colors, even though green is my favorite color, but most shinies that have been green have. Uh, you mean right. the the sickly looking Machamp? Oh my god, my champ. You literally look like you got herpes all over you there, man. But, um, yeah, I'm like... I just, and also, I don't know if you actually, like, seen, like, the shinies displayed in the overworld as much, but the shinies look really good quality. Like, if you had it on your team, you, like, literally stare at it, like, the whole, like detail to like because i was watching like these guys do their co-op angle and one guy was showing me volpix and i actually looked i was able to look really closely at volpix and just see like the individual like lining for his tails and stuff and i just felt like the detail really shined on volpix out in the open it was really cool yeah um i just totally lost what i was about to say um had something to do with i'm just wondering what my random shiny is gonna be i hope it's oh decent. i was gonna say yeah i ran into a random uh shiny already was it during the max raid or was it just in the wild area just in the wild yeah that's what happened was, to a lot of people i was in the wild area and i just it was early game, too. I just happened to be, like, biking around trying to go to a... Um, where was I trying to bike to? I was just trying to bike to a raid. I Clearly, I was, like, five gyms in because I had access to the full wild area and it wasn't too overleveled. And um, I ran into a the middle form of the hat Pokemon. And all of a sudden it just sparkled. I was like, wait a minute, what? Excuse me? I just randomly run into a shiny there? It was weird. I'd, that's like my third or fourth shiny ever. Are you still there, or did I lose you? Uh, I think I lost Thriller. Um, I think his internet might have crapped out, so because he was having problems before we started recording. So I think I'm gonna wrap this episode here. Unfortunately, once again, Thriller doesn't get to say goodbye because uh, his internet kicked out. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Check out the links in the description down below. Uh, like I said, Thriller and I are going to sit down and figure out what we're going to do for next year as far as... Um, holy crap, those are expensive. Um, Iowa Bros and all that. I would say go follow his channel, but like Thriller said, he did end up deleting his channel. Um, Copa and other reasons. So, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Check out the rest of the links, and I'll see you guys next time.